This is a book bowl summary of the book, Masters of Scale by Reid Hoffman. Discover how world-famous innovators scaled up their business with inspirational tips in the book Masters of Scale by Reid Hoffman. Learn from the success stories of companies like PayPal, Airbnb, Facebook, and Netflix, and gain insights into the importance of timing, leadership, culture, and adaptability. Scaling a startup can be a thrilling adventure, and this book can guide you on how to turn no into an opportunity for growth and satisfaction. Embrace rejection as an opportunity for growth and success. Don't let rejection discourage you. Embrace it as an opportunity to learn and grow. Catherine Minshew, the founder of The Muse, heard no a staggering 148 times before finally securing $28 million in funding for her online career platform. Her experience serves as a reminder that a no from an investor doesn't necessarily mean the end of the road for your business idea. Viewing rejection as an opportunity for feedback can help you refine your pitch and adjust your approach. For example, if an investor declines to fund your chain of kickboxing gyms due to concerns about the local demographics, you can use this as an opportunity to gather more information and consider alternative locations. It's important to distinguish between different types of no. Some are simply lazy or uninformed, while others are honest and well-intentioned. But the most exciting kind of rejection is the squirmy no, which often means you're on to something truly innovative or groundbreaking. By embracing rejection and using it to your advantage, you can turn a setback into a catalyst for growth and success. Importance of Developing a Strong Company Culture for Successful Startup Scaling Creating a strong company culture is a critical component of scaling your startup successfully. It's essential to take advantage of the early phase when you have a small group of loyal users and carefully listen to their feedback. This feedback can guide you in identifying your core values and developing your company culture. Netflix is a perfect example of a company with a well-defined culture that drives its success. The company's culture deck, which outlines more than 100 slides of its values and philosophies, is accessible to anyone on the internet. This clarity from the outset is essential since once a culture is established, it can be challenging to change. The culture you create should guide how you treat your employees, customers, and investors. Hiring people who share your values is critical and committing to meaningful diversity is equally important. A diverse team can appreciate the same set of core values and attract early investors who share your vision. When done right, a strong company culture can drive morale and attract more customers, creating a loop that leads to even more success. Finding the right timing to scale your startup. Scaling a startup is a delicate balancing act. Move too quickly and you risk launching an unfinished product that may turn off potential customers. Move too slowly and you risk losing momentum and falling behind competitors. Knowing when to strike and when to be patient is key to achieving success in the startup world. Case in point, Tori Birch's decision to open her retail store in New York City during Fashion Week, despite not having her custom design doors ready, the move paid off, indicating the success her brand would later achieve. Similarly, PayPal founder Peter Thiel's strategy of paying initial customers $10 per referrals helped fuel rapid growth, but it came with its own set of challenges and aftermath. As a startup founder, it's important to monitor the changing business environment and prioritize which issues require your attention. It's essential to strike while the iron is hot, but not all fires are equal. Problems with core product or company culture should take precedence over fancy office upgrades. Before scaling up, assess the potential risks and ask yourself if any issues could kill your business. If so, it's crucial to address them before moving forward. When done right, scaling up can be a game changer for startups, but it requires careful timing and execution. If you're finding this video to be enjoyable, show your support by liking it and subscribing to my channel for even more fantastic content. Your encouragement means everything to me and drives me to keep creating videos for you. Observing and reacting to customer behavior can drive startup growth. To truly scale up a startup, it's essential to pay attention to what your customers do not just what they say. The initial users of Facebook expressed disappointment when Mark Zuckerberg extended the service beyond Harvard, but they continued to use it and drive its growth. Similarly, Jennifer Hyman of Rent the Runway observed that her customers were not gravitating towards designer Jason Wu's clothes when choosing outfits to rent. By collaborating with Wu on a more wearable line, she was able to drive even more business. Founders can conduct their focus groups or observe customers' behavior to make profitable observations. 
Miriam Nafisi of Minted found that men today are more involved in wedding planning and began incorporating less overtly feminine designs into their offerings. Reacting to customers' behavior can yield exciting results, but what if you come across an insurmountable hurdle? That's a topic to explore in the next section. Pivoting to success. How flexibility can save your startup. When facing difficulties while scaling up, it's essential to be flexible and willing to pivot to a new idea. This ability can breathe new life into a failing product and even lead to greater success. Ev Williams, the founder of Twitter, is a prime example of this skill. When his podcast publishing platform, Odeo, became obsolete due to the competition from Apple, he pivoted to a new idea and held a hackathon that resulted in Twitter's creation. During the global pandemic, many companies had to pivot to survive, and Airbnb is one of them. They responded to a shift from office buildings to home offices by offering long-term stays for remote workers, along with unique virtual experiences like salsa lessons and tours of local attractions. Snowboarder Toby Lutke also pivoted his business idea into a new one when he created Shopify after struggling to find decent software to sell snowboards online. Pivoting to a new idea can ultimately drive a company forward, but to achieve maximum potential, strong leadership is necessary. Being able to adapt to new circumstances and lead a team through changes is critical for a startup success. So if you're facing difficulty while scaling up, don't be afraid to pivot to an even better idea and take your startup to new heights. Effective leadership is crucial in scaling up a company. Scaling up a company is a significant challenge, and it requires effective leadership to navigate the changes and keep employees motivated. Leaders need to communicate their vision, sustain a steady drumbeat of purpose and motivation, and encourage opposing viewpoints. They also need to be compassionate, wise, and clear on their vision, willing to listen, learn, and take advice. A good example of effective leadership is Angela Ahrens, who made a three-minute iPhone video every week for four years to communicate her vision to all Apple employees. Marissa Mayer, on the other hand, would hire smart 23-year-olds, give them a huge portfolio, challenge them to learn something new, and then have them switch to another division. This approach resulted in a tsunami of new ideas and cross-trained managerial teams that benefited Google and the world. As companies scale up, their culture makes a necessary adjustment from piracy to the Navy with an influx of rules, accountability, and good behavior. Effective leadership can help drive a company forward, but it also yields tremendous good for the world when it naturally flows into the final aspect of scaling big, doing good. Scaling up for good. How successful entrepreneurs can make a positive impact on society. As the owner of Starbucks, Howard Schultz made a conscious decision to prioritize the well-being of his employees. He ensured that every employee, including part-time workers, had comprehensive health insurance, becoming the first American company to do so. Scaling up a business can allow entrepreneurs to positively impact their employees and the communities they serve. Filling a need in society, the blacklist, Franklin Leonard, a reader for Leonardo DiCaprio's production company, saw a need for good scripts that weren't being made into movies. He published a list of these scripts, which became the blacklist. Although Leonard lost his job, the list has helped numerous independent filmmakers bring their projects to completion. Doing good at scale, paying student debt. Robert D. Smith, CEO of Vista Equity Partners, credits his success to a better education due to Denver's newly desegregated busing system. He decided to pay it forward in 2019 by announcing that he would pay off the student debt of every Morehouse graduate. Scaling up a business can provide entrepreneurs with the means to positively impact the lives of others in a significant way. The ripple effect of doing good, retaining workers in China. When Starbucks attempted to expand in China, Howard Schultz learned that worker turnover was partly due to the low status of being a barista in Chinese culture. He organized parents' weekends, inviting parents from remote towns and villages to see the operation and its benefits. This effort not only made for happy families, but also helped tremendously in retaining workers. Making a positive impact on society. The power of scaling up. The larger a business becomes, the greater its potential impact on society. Successful entrepreneurs who prioritize doing good can use their businesses to positively shape communities and regions. Howard Schultz, Franklin Leonard, and Robert D. Smith are examples of leaders who have made a significant impact through their businesses and scaled up good deeds. We hope this video provided valuable insights and information for you. Which of these business leaders inspires you the most, Howard Schultz or Angela Ahrens? Let us know in the comments. And if you learned something new in this video, make sure to hit the button and subscribe for more videos. Thank you, and until next time.